All right, so let's do the last set of problems, number uh, 21 through 28. So we're looking at, uh, I guess it's number 21. A uh, commonly used unit is the kilowatt hour. And so uh, physical quantity, what are we measuring? So kilowatts, uh, that should make you think of power. So let's do power, and that's equal to work over time. And we know that power is measured in um, watts. That's different from work. Work is measured in joules. Time is measured in seconds. And so this is kilowatt times hour. So it's power times the time. So we move that over. So you get power times time is equal to work. So this would be watt seconds, but we could change that into kilowatt hours. It's just power and time. And that's equal to joules on the other side. So you should be able to answer with that information. Um, a child pushes horizontally on a cart, a box of mass M. Okay, so we have a mass M and then pushing with some force, F, horizontally at a constant speed. So V is constant. Okay. The coefficient of friction is mu. So we have friction. It's going to be kinetic friction. At what rate does the child do work on the box? So rate would be the work over time. Uh, work over time. Um, so work over time would be power. And so the power would be the amount of work that the child's doing. Um, so power would be, again, power would be our rate because it's work over time. Um, but we don't know a distance, and instead we have velocity. So there's another one for power that's also the force times velocity. And so using that, since it's constant, since the velocity is constant, then we know that the force is equal to this one. So we actually should draw it like that. So we know the force is equal to the kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is mu times the normal. So that would be the amount of force that she's applying. So the power would be that mu naught mu n times v, and then you can finish it from there. Let's see, number whatever, 23. It's 606 Newton. Newtons is a force, so that's the force of gravity. The force of gravity is 606 Newtons. Climbs a 5.1 vertical rope, so it goes up 5.1 meters at a constant speed. So V is constant, and the time is 7.16 seconds. Uh, what is the power? So again, power is work over time. It's also change in energy over time. It's also the force times velocity. Um, so we can't do the velocity because we don't know what it is. We just know that it's constant. So we would probably change in energy maybe. Yeah, change in energy. Because they're moving at a constant speed, the force is the same. So that's the amount of force that you have to apply up. And what we're doing is we're changing the potential energy. So power is gonna be the gravitational potential energy divided by the time. Um, and the gravitational potential at that mg, that's, that's this right here. All right, so that'll get you set up for that one. A mechanic pushes a cart, or a car rather, 2430, uh, from rest, so V naught equals zero, to some speed V, doing uh, 5064 joules of work in the process, find the speed V. So it looks like um, work, remember, is change in energy. So we can just think about the energy. Um, over here, you're going to have kinetic energy. But over here, there's none. There's no kinetic energy because it's not moving. So work would be um, technically is kinetic energy final minus the initial. That's the change. But there's no initial kinetic energy. So work is equal to 1 half mvf squared. And we want to know the, the velocity, so you just plug in your numbers and solve for that. 
A car has a kinetic energy of this amount. So you have a car, it's traveling with a speed, the velocity is 27 meters per second. Uh, it has some kinetic energy equal to 4.33 times 10 to the fifth. Um, they don't tell us the mass, but it's moving. So we want to know the mass. So we could probably, the definition of kinetic energy, 1 half m v squared. We know the kinetic energy, we know the velocity, so you can solve this equation for the mass. A weightlifter lifts, okay, so we have some weights, and again, they give us, uh, they give us the weight, which is a force, uh, so 351 newtons, and that's the force of gravity, so that's the Fg. Um, from the ground level to a position overhead, a distance of 1.5, so you're going to lift it up 1.5 meters. It looks like the marine problem. How much work does the weightlifter do? So uh, work is change in energy. In this case, it's the gravitational potential. And we'll assume that this is uh, there's none to begin with, so we have just have it up at the top. So work would be uh, mgh. But keep in mind that, that this is not the mass. This is actually mg. That's weight. It's already multiplied. Um, okay, so an advertisement claims that a 1,700 kilogram car, so we have a killer car, can accelerate from rest, so initial velocity is zero, um, to 30 meters per second. The final is 30 meters per second in a time of 8.3 seconds. Uh, they give us watts to horsepower, so we want to know average power. Power is work over time, or change in energy over time, or the uh, force times velocity. What power must the motor produce to cause this acceleration if we ignore friction and air resistance? So we're basically looking at, um, you know, you may be tempted to use the velocity, but we don't know the force. This is what we're looking for, power. Uh, we don't know the amount of force that's being applied. So we really can't use this. So we can go to change in energy. Because in the beginning, there's no kinetic energy. But in the end, we do. We have some. And so um, we just want to find how much, like you guys running up the steps, same thing, except now it's just going into kinetic energy. So power would be the change in kinetic energy over time. And there's none to begin with, so it's just this final. One half mv squared, that's final over time. And that would be the power, the average power. And finally, Batman. So Batman is hanging from a rope. So we have a mass, 53.9 kilograms. There's Batman, he's hanging from a rope. The rope is 8.54 meters, the other end of which is tied to a tree limb. Okay, so you have a tree here. There you go. The rope is hanging close to the tree trunk, and he's able to get the rope in motion by kicking away from the trunk. So it's like he's going to push this way. You know, the trunk is like right there. So he's going to push against the trunk, eventually getting it to swing up. Um, to reach a ledge when the ropes makes a 92 degree angle. Okay, I drew my picture back. So with the vertical, a 92 with the vertical. So the vertical would be like this, and we want to, basically this is a vertical. So we have to go up um, above 90 degrees. So let me use red. Um, right here would be, that would be 90 degrees. Um, I don't know, well, which way are we doing it? Maybe this is 90 this way. So this would be 92. I, um, I don't think it matters. Let me double check. Well, I'll go through it um, either way. And we'll do it two different ways. So one would be, you know, maybe we're talking 90 degrees like this. Or rather, 92 degrees. So the 92 is here, 92 degrees. Uh, the other way to think about it would be if it was actually up like that. 
or 92 degrees is here, 92 degrees. And so what that's going to change is your height because uh, we want to do the, the work against the force of gravity. So work would be uh, your change in energy, your force times, or your change in energy, we'll just say, because we could do it with force, but that's just force of gravity times height. Uh, the change in energy would be potential, so that's mgh. So it's that h that's going to be affected. So if it starts, he's basically starting here, and it's whether or not he swings to here or he swings to here. If we are at 90 degrees right here, then we know that that height here is 8.54. So you either, if you go here, then you, what you have to do is use trig to figure out this distance and subtract that from 8.54 for your height. If it's up here, then you would use trig again, but on this side, and then add that to 8.54. And then with that, then you can calculate the work. Now you might be saying, well, how am I gonna know? What if this is on the test? How am I gonna do it? Well, what you can do is once you have it set up, um, you just test it. You're like, okay, I'll do this one. Is that an answer choice? If not, then do the other one. Um, it doesn't take that long once you have it set up. Because over here, uh, that's 92. Ninety two is measured for the orange one. Ninety two is measured here, so that's two degrees. Oops, two degrees. Likewise, uh, for the blue one, it's ninety and then two, so it's two degrees for both of them. So you end up getting the same value. It's just whether or not you're subtracting it or adding it. Okay, and that's it. Um, so just final thoughts. Uh, notice how I drew pictures for everything. That's how we just think about it, list everything out. Then use a general variable, a general equation. Like what are they actually asking about? Identify that before you put any numbers in. The other thing is being able to solve for any variable in an equation. Here we solve for velocity. There, I think there was another one we solve for mass. Um, so you should be able to solve for any variables in these equations. But always draw a picture, identify what they're asking about, and the equation that goes with that. And then you just work from there.